nine point deficit right here. And this could end up as Miami's biggest playoff win in the history of their franchise. Of course, the Bulls are also on their way to Chicago with a 1-1 a series tie, which is probably more than they could have even hoped for. I, I know they were planning on it, but to beat Miami on their home floor in one of these first two games is a huge accomplishment. Now they've got to regroup and get ready for game three. Please make that. Come on, Mohammed. And as we have talked about many times in the past, although it's a little different because we're looking at a Please make that fade away. Oh my goodness. First against the Mets, that counts as a foul. And in game one here on Monday night, you know, one game usually does not lead to what will take place in the next one in the playoffs. In fact, it's usually sort of the opposite because the, the team that loses comes out with as was the case tonight, so much more energy and, and passion. And Come on, man. You've got to be joking, dude. Please make that. Oh, my goodness. Come on, Radmanovich. You just drained it three threes, bro. Plus a steal. As the series shifts to Chicago. So the final score as Miami evens it up at 1-1, one 115-78. One, it's the biggest playoff win in terms of margin for the Miami Heat as they win by 37, and for the Chicago Bulls, the worst loss in the history of the franchise wow. in terms of the playoffs. A terrific all-around game for LeBron James. He is with Craig Singer. 37 point loss. Well, LeBron, a game in which nine technicals, a flagrant, two Bulls ejected. How do you keep your head when those around you are losing theirs? Uh, you just stay the course and understand what we're here for. So win a basketball game, and uh, you know, we was able to do that tonight. Game one, you had just two points in the first half. Tonight, you had 12 in the first quarter. How did your mental approach differ tonight? I just wanted to, want to be aggressive, uh, not wait for him as much. And then, uh, you know, I know if I came out aggressive, I got some uh, things going to the basket. It would shoot the floor, and they opened up with my shooters, and those guys got to go in the second half. This was a blowout win, but yet it's 1-1 tied in the series. What do you gain from this win, and do you feel you have the advantage even though you lost home court? Well, you just said it. I mean, uh, no matter if you win by 20, 30, or one point, it's just a 1-1 series. They came in and did their job. They got one on our floor, and yep. they took home court, so uh, we got to try to go in Chicago and get it back. All right, thanks a lot. Back to you, Mark. All right, thanks, guys. A blowout for the Miami Heat. Look at that. 15 to 78. Thanks to our producer, My Scott goodness. Cockerell, our director, Renato Lowe, associate directors, Billy Proctor, and D.T. Slaufman, graphic coordinators, J.P. Jeff Harris, and Sam Coles, and a statistician, Brian Tell. Coming up next, it'll be game two of the West Semis, Warriors, and Spurs from San Antonio. So for Steve Kerr, Craig Sager, and the rest of our crew, Mark Albert saying goodnight. From Miami, the biggest playoff victory in Miami Heat franchise history, worst playoff defeat in the history of the Chicago Bulls. You've been watching the NBA on TNT, the exclusive home of the 2013 Eastern Conference Finals. We'll take a break and then it's to Dick Stockton and Chris Webber in San Antonio. All right, well, there you guys have it. Uh, 37 point blowout <sighs> almost a double blowout I mean what happened to us tonight now I'm not trying to use it at, use this as an excuse by saying that we played without Rose Heinrich and Dang but you better at least consider that whether you're a Bulls fan or not doesn't matter you know we were without the, uh, three key players now I know just by saying that some Heat fan or some non Bulls fan is gonna comment and say oh but you, you guys beat us in game one without dang Rose and Noah and you weren't crying about that <laughs> it's like okay um, when we win even without a couple key, uh, key guys does not mean that when we lose I shouldn't mention this to say the very least. But anyways, looking past that, what a chippy game. I mean, right from the opening bucket, like within the first 10 seconds of the game, 
Who, who was it? Uh, Haslam Fowl's uh, kryptonite goes down. I don't know, like, what happened to Nate. I think he took an elbow to his stomach. I could be wrong, but from that point on, <laughs> it was like 90s NBA all over again. It was like the it was like the 80s and 90s playoff caliber type of basketball all over again. We had like, what, nine technicals, two ejections? Scott Foster, the outside official. I mean, what the heck is the matter with you, bro? Tossing out Noah just by, you know, just for complaining? What else? Uh, Taj Gibson also got a double technical. <laughs> Who else got a technical? LeBron, Wade, I believe Nate. What should I say? Kryptonite. Just an all, just an all-around chippy game. Very chippy game to say the very least. I cannot wait till Game Three at Chicago. Oh. Let's just hope D Rose com comes back in Game Three, guys. Oh man, series tied at one. Obviously, we better take it to him at at Chicago with or without the youngest MVP in NBA history. Now, despite that, I still show tremendous credit to the Heat. You know, despite the fact that we were roseless, Heinrichless, and dangerousless, I still do show the Miami Heat tremendous credit. Okay, I can't say I'm going to give them all the credit in the world because obviously we were playing without Heinrich, Rose, and Dang. So I'm sorry, I just can't do that. But game three is going to be, I don't know, let's see here. Today's the 8th, so it's going to be on either Friday the 10th or Saturday the 11th at the United Center, whether you like it or not. Uh, the Madhouse on Madison Street should go crazy as I expect them to um but I don't know man Scott Foster the official he has a short fuse reminds me a lot of that of that one referee back in the 90s I believe uh yes it was in the 93 uh Eastern Conference Finals game two where he ejected uh Scotty Pippen let me see who's what his name was um uh, Bill Oaks. There we go. Bill Oaks also had a short fuse. And I guess uh, Scott Foster did a pretty darn good unintentional job at imitating that, to say, to say the very least. Alright, but let me know your guys' thoughts on this. Uh, game 3 in Chicago. Go Bulls. And um, I'll get to you guys soon. Alright.